from President Zuma on the foreign policy. There's, there's a talk here of illegal immigrants, um, and I think his emphasis is on that. But he is not the kind who can say um, Africans must not come into South Africa because we are one continent, and he advocated for that himself. He stayed in, uh, in uh, Zimbabwe, he stayed in Swaziland, he stayed in Mozambique, he was in Lusaka and everywhere else, including Angola, if I'm not wrong. So he's the last person. If, if anything, he's the one who should be advocating for this because he, he, he practically and personally benefited out of the hospitality yeah. uh, of Africans. And there's no way, no, everybody understands the EFF uh, argument. Do you know that uh, Venda was a republic, uh, Lebua was a republic, Uputazwana was a republic, uh, and KwaZulu Natal and all of that, uh, including Seskans, yes. yeah, Bantustans. They, they, you needed a passport. Uh, to go to Venda. We collapsed the borders in Venda that, and said, no more, we are one thing, we are one South Africa because we're always made to imagine us being different people, the same way they make us believe now. After the collapse of vendors, um, of the border, we never experienced the influx of vendors into Johannesburg. The people of Bembe are still there. You will find them. It's not an abandoned land because they saw greener pastures in Johannesburg. They said, we're no longer staying here. We're going to Johannesburg. What these people are saying is a swarkhafar. It is threatening, intimidating as South Africans that you are actually going to have more in your yard if these people are going to come here, which is practically impossible. Why would uh, the people of Mozambique leave Mozambique? Because they are doing relatively well. Why would the people of Swaziland, and you know what is even worse is that the Swaziland people would have left without Malema because there's nothing they've done, nothing fiscal that can prevent them. The same thing with Lesotho. The people of Lesotho, it's Friday today. Tomorrow, if you go at the border of Lesotho and South Africa, there's no fence. They come drink this side during the day, at night go back. There are others in Lesotho who are now receiving yeah. Sasa yeah, in, in South, South Africa. Africa. I lived in Botswana many years. I yes. would go to a funeral in South Africa. Yeah. You know, the funeral would be here, mm. but you'd be eating uh, in the Botswana side. Yes. You just cross. Yes. Komu yeah. is in the side yeah, of no. Botswana. The borders don't seem to yes. exist. Yes. But are you not advocating for illegality with that statement? They must find creative ways to come into South Africa. What are creative ways? Crossing the river. Surely there must be a type of border, not a colonial system, mm -hmm. but a type of referendum to say, do you have the necessary papers for the instances of planning? Because the women will be here, they need to take the kids to hospital, for schools, you know, for urban planning uh, and development. There needs to be a, a quantity of how many people require medication in Joburg. If government doesn't have that plan, it's going to be a disaster. Do you regret those comments? No. Why don't you require documents to go to Guazul Natan? And you're coming from here, and you have nothing there in Guazul Natan. And then you are going to collapse and get sick in Guazul Natan and affect their budget. Why is that not a requirement? What is different between you and these people who are there? Why can't we develop a policy that says, if we're to treat a Lesotho uh, 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 citizen in South Africa, so Swaziland or, or Nigeria, once confirmed that this is uh, a citizen of this particular country, these are the credentials, we treat this person and then we invoice their country. Why should we have a hospital and then be worried that sick people are going to be uh, sick and in then uh, influx our hospital? Don't be worried about influx. You must be worried with healing people so that you save humanity. And the only way you can heal people is when you've got your own planning, but you know that in case other people come from outside, you always uh, provide an invoice uh, to those countries that they come from. That's, that has been African planning, by the way. Those things you are saying is Eurocentric planning. We, you are talking about a funeral and a cow. You plan for 100 people. 
700 oh, people no, no. comes and you never say this is not part of me no you always know so we the, embrace no rsvp caspe no we embrace okay. each other we we don't need invitation from each other um, the the europeans are doing it uh, the people who are advocating for us not to do it there is no border uh, in europe you wake up uh, in milan and then you go and eat breakfast in paris and have uh, uh, your lunch in germany in the, with ease without any paper without talking to anyone my brother you're sitting here you've got an idea these people are not listening to you wake up one morning get into a car go and make that presentation in zimbabwe in mozambique in angola without knowing their language but with a brilliant idea before you knew it you know it you are a citizen there you're working there they embrace you so the poor do not have the necessary means actually to can even leave their countries to come here. Most of the people you see here is the people who had the means to come here. But where's? Because I'm, we're going to Easter and I've got a property just next to N1 to Zimbabwe. I can't get out of my property with these people going back home. These are the people who you say they influx your country. They are not here to stay. They are here to make the means and they go back to their homes. They are never here to stay. They are never here to occupy your land. They are one, never one here to take away says, from One you. argument says, when the Malawans and the Zimbabweans go back home, mm. who is going to work here? Because there will be no staffing in Hamden, mm. right? The restaurants, the hotels, are all foreign HR. Mm -hmm. Those are the foreign hands that we use. The, mm. the counter argument is that it will be empty because these people come and work. Many of them do work that South Africans don't necessarily want to do. Are you in line with that argument that, no. that, that foreigners are not stealing jobs in South Africa? No, 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 no. The, the, the argument that when they leave, um, 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 our uh, restaurants won't have people and all of that is not entirely correct because they are hired by restaurants with an intention to pay very minimum wages and they don't want to spend um, on workers. So um, um, if they leave tomorrow and uh, South Africans who are interested to go and work, they will go and work. The problem is going to be for the bosses. Because South Africans are not going to accept a minimum wage. They, they, they will want a, a wages that speak to their a, a lifestyle, that speaks to their a, a living conditions and qualifications. So uh, bosses don't want to pay. The problem is not Zimbabweans. They don't hire themselves in the restaurants. They don't hire themselves in our houses. Most of these domestic workers are from Lesotho. Uh, mm. It doesn't mean South Africans can't do that. But the South Africans are going to demand a certain Why amount not, of, of, of money and people are reluctant to pay. I've got a restaurant. I've got a farm. Uh, I've got a butcher in a township. You will not find a single foreigner. Because uh, I've not, uh, the skills I've been looking for, right? Um, I, when I looked for those skills in South Africa, th there, was, there was no way I couldn't find them. So I found those skills in South Africa, and therefore there was no need for me to go outside. If I had looked for a skill and I didn't find, there was absolutely nothing wrong with me to go outside and get the people with the skill to come and work mm here -hmm. yeah, in South Africa. What does Siloma Lima look like? at the age of 50, uh, during 50. Early, early 40s now, I mean, 43. When, you, when you imagine uh,